University Radio in the Eastern Region. In London, it's on ABN Radio and worldwide at myjohnline.com. Up in this edition, as Ghana counts down to a possible reopening of the country, by end of May, President Tekufalu says he is happy with the rate of recoveries of COVID-19 patients, even as the case count reaches 6,269. If it continues that way, then it gives us the opportunity to be looking at how we can ease many of the restrictions that are making life for all of us very difficult. Many officials of in some security prisons fear a positive case there could be damaging for the facility as they lament the inability to observe social distancing because of overcrowding. Also, on Tech Thursday today, we'll tell you about an artificial intelligence COVID X-ray detector which simplifies diagnosis of the disease. As bankruptcies loom over U.S. oil industry, we'll tell you how you could be paying more for fuel here in Ghana in the coming weeks. And we'll bring you the story of a visually impaired 60-year-old farmer who's been tilling the soil for 30 years but has nothing to show for it because he was determined not to end up on the streets begging. No, for me, last thing, I don't have a decent place to sleep. I don't like begging, but I plead with you to help me build a good house. When it rains, I really suffer, so please help me. We have details of these and other stories here in the package. Thank you for joining us. Let's begin with COVID-related stories this morning. And Ghana could be reopened fully by the end of the month as government continues to engage interest groups on the way forward. The country's COVID case count currently stands at 6,269 with 1,898 recoveries. 31 people have died from the disease. At a meeting with chiefs of Koma and Shima in the Angla traditional area in the Volta region, President Ekufalo said the low number of deaths and positive recoveries give hope that the country will be out of the woods soon. The numbers in Ghana are small, and the numbers of people who are also being hospitalized as a result of the COVID in a severe condition are also very small at the moment. We pray to God that that it continues that way. Because if it continues that way, then it gives us the opportunity to be looking at how we can ease many of the restrictions that are making life for all of us very difficult, so that we can go back to more or less normal. But even as the president shows optimism over Ghana's situation, there is a source of worry for officials of Ensoa medium security prisons. Now, they fear a positive case at the facility will spell doom as they struggle to practice social distancing due to overcrowding there. Public relations officer of Ensoa prisons, DSP Adamu Abdul Latif, tells Joy News prison facilities in the eastern region have only been given 20 thermometer guns to share among themselves, a situation he believes could militate against their if efforts in the fight against the virus. He spoke to Kwesi Parker Wilson. The issue of social distancing is really a very difficult issue in prisons, especially in the medium security prison in Sawam. Because as of today, we have over 3,000 inmates in our custody. As against the original capacity of about 800 inmates, so you can guess the rate of overcrowding in the facility. So talking about social distancing, I would say it's close to impossible. You hear the public relations officer of Ensoam Prison's DSP Adamu Abdul Latif. Meanwhile, one person has died with 41 nurses and midwives testing positive for COVID-19. That's according to General Secretary of the Registered Nurses and Midwives Association, David Tinkrain Chum. This comes on the heels of calls by the Ghana Medical Association on government to provide personal protective equipment for frontline staff at the district and community health facilities. Mr. Tinkrain tells Joy News 288 nurses and midwives are in mandatory quarantine nation. Uh, There's about 41 nurses and midwives who are infected now, with about uh, 288 under quarantine, and then one death. Now, these are the staggering statistics that we have now. These are health workers generally? Nurses and midwives, I'm not talking about... Oh, this this is just just nurses and midwives? Exactly. And and, and in this Kumasi alone? Not Kumasi, the entire country. You hear the General Secretary of the Ghana Registered Nurses and Midwives Association, David Tinkrain Chum. Before we move to other stories, let's do Tech like Thursday now. A pneumonia as a result of COVID-19 occurs when part of the lungs refuse or fuse and collapse. The virus damages the surface area of the organ where oxygen transfer usually takes place. And this makes briefing difficult and damage to the lungs can only be detected with an X-ray or CT scan. Fortunately, an artificial intelligence device developed by a Ghanaian scientist is able to analyze chest, X-ray or CT scan images to determine lung abnormalities. Kwesi Debra speaks to Dr. Mark Amobwating of the University of Energy and Natural Resources for our Tech Thursday story. 
The March 2020 edition of the journal Lancet Infectious Diseases indicates approximately 13.8% of people with COVID-19 will have severe conditions due to breath shortness. Earlier study in January showed 75% of infected persons who have pneumonia to deal with. An X-ray or CT scan, therefore, makes it easy to diagnose and monitor the condition. Yeah, I, I did one for malaria. So when this COVID-19 came out, I was looking at how to apply the same concept because the AI in the X-ray is very fast. In Ghana, X-ray images are everywhere. So you just take a picture of the X-ray and apply it to the AI. This just a, it's a simple interface. For you you click to select your x-ray image and when i did that i realized it was quite fast the uh, accuracy of the ai model in detecting the x-ray was 98 percent the sensitivity and selectivity was 95 percent and 96 percent these are images i downloaded from around the world people who are posting the x-ray diagnosis from italy from china and i used it to train the ai to see if it could detect this from other cases Dr. Mark Amobuati of the University of Energy and Natural Resources ending Kwesi Debra's report for Tech Thursday. Away from COVID-related stories, Minority Leader Haruna Idvisu says the confidence of the NDC minority group in the judiciary to be impartial is eroding. Speaking on PM Express on the Joy News Channel last night, Mr. Idvisu said although they have serious concerns with the constitutional instrument that if passed by Parliament will empower the Electoral Commission to compile a new voters' register, taking the matter up in court may not be an option. I'm getting very, very reluctant with the court. I am not satisfied with the ruling of the Supreme Court in the Dr. Ayeni uh, Martin Amidu case. And you know what the Supreme Court have simply said? Article 190 of the Constitution irrelevant. Your grandmother, grandfather, you can constitute them tomorrow and say come and do public service because your experience as a critical human resource is still important. Fidelity to the law is important, not fidelity to the appointing authority. Yeah, the Harun Idrisu Minority Leader, he was speaking on PM Express last night on the Joy News Channel. The show repeats this morning at 9 a.m. Do make a date. Now, former member of the Armed Forces Revolutionary Council, Major Retired Boache Jan, says he stands by his comments that the fuss surrounding the compilation of a new voters' register could plunge Ghana into chaos. Major Retired Boache Jan was released from the police custody after he was arrested for allegedly beating war drums. But speaking to Evans Mensa on Newsnight, the former military major noted he was prepared to face the police in court. I am not changing my mind. There's a conclusion I arrived at after a study and experience long history. If they do it, it will happen. If they don't do it, it won't happen. That doesn't mean that I have conspired with people to call civil war. So you stand by those words? I stand by those words. As we speak, the police say they are going ahead. They've charged you and they're they're going... That's why we are in a democracy. We go and contest it rigorously. In court? Sure. Yeah, the former member of the Armed Forces Revolutionary Council, Major Retired Boachi Jan. We can now bring you one of our top stories this morning. Now, as a visually impaired farmer, he was he has worked for over 30 years putting food on the table of many families. But all he has to show for his hard work is a weak madhouse. Lawrence Demabu, a 60-year-old resident of Vajato South District in the Volta region, who vowed never to get onto the street with a bowl in hand begging, is now appealing for support to build a small, decent retirement house. Jojo Kobna went there to meet him. After losing his sight in his early 20s, Demabu vowed never to beg to survive. He lines up a rope so that he can plant maize in a straight line. He recounts... Sometimes people tell him during harvest seasons to steal from him. Sometime while harvesting yam, some people follow me and they steal from me. Lawrence's biggest fear is old age. He is worried about who will take care of him when he is old and frail. Finding a partner has been difficult, so he has no child and has also given up on the prospects of finding a wife. My friends try to find me a wife, but unfortunately, the women always stay with me for a short time. They feel ashamed of me. After winning Best Disability Farmer in 2017, he also received 800 CDs to support his farming. 30 years of farming, a weak madhouse is what he has to show for all his hard work. I don't have a decent place to sleep. I plead with you to help me build a good house. When it rains, I really suffer. 
That's Jojo Corbinas report, and that'll be how we end the package this morning. But award-winning rapper Sakode has our road safety campaign message for today. Have a great day. I am Komla.